Oh, the games people played out Every night and night Boots Underground for Freedom. So, what? Well, so we're here in Malahide today and this is your first time in Fingal and this is a constituency who has, we have a local MEP here, Claire Daly, who's done a lot of work with you guys over the last seven months. I'm a, the local representative for the Swords Ward for her group, the Independence for Change locally. So we really appreciate you guys coming to the area. And I suppose the main thing is getting the message out here, meeting the people along the way and really getting the message out here about Shannon neutrality and getting yourselves home for Christmas. We have been tremendously inspired by, by Claire by her commitment to truth, by her commitment to peace, and by her commitment to ending the U.S. use of Shannon and the violation of Irish neutrality. So that has inspired us greatly. And we're also just grateful for her friendship and who she is. And of course, we were following her good example when we went on the airfield at Shannon. Going home is what you want and what you deserve for Christmas. But you, there's nothing on earth that's going to stop you from getting to the case. And I think the government need to see that. And I think they, it's, it's like, there's not a flight risk, you know? As I've said, we're more of a death risk than a flight <laughs> risk. Yeah. But I think that the state prosecutor with all re due respect, I think that the state prosecutor must be aware of that. Mm -hmm. That knowing who we are, why we did what we did, our commitment to it, and it hasn't stopped in this mm -hmm. past seven months. We've been speaking out. Mm -hmm. In many places, we've dropped banners about it. You know, I think they understand that we have a definite commitment. Mm -hmm. You would have to physically stop us from coming back. We want to be here for this trial because what's going to be on trial is the U.S. war making and the violation of, of Irish neutrality. Mm -hmm. And that is of critical importance. That is the important issue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, we're coming back. There's no question yeah. about that. And I think that they know that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they uh, must know. In terms of <clears throat> mass media coverage, you've been here seven months. Have you noticed in the last seven months the coverage of, to, of yourselves? Yeah, well, the media, for the most part, when they do cover us, and, and we certainly have attracted some attention from the media, Generally, they exclude the core issue. You know, they, they say, yeah, here are these two vets who've been held since St. Patrick's Day for having gone in the airfield, but they don't get into the destruction of Irish neutrality at all. Uh, so that we have to keep hammering that message home, that it's neutrality. As, as Tarek will tell you, we've talked to hundreds and hundreds of people since we've been here. And almost without exception, they all favor real Irish neutrality. Uh, but most of them have the feeling like they can't get the politicians to do it. And they don't recognize the power they have, you know, that if they exert popular pressure sufficiently, politicians are going to have to. And that's what we can do. And that's what we all can do. And if we keep doing that, that message will get out. Yeah. It will get out. And we have spoken to literally hundreds of people, many hundreds of people. I don't, I didn't count. Yeah. But, but since we've been here, people stop us because they've seen us on TV. They recognize the hats. They've, they've seen us in the paper or heard a radio interview. Oh, I know you guys. Oh, you, you're the two veterans. Mm -hmm. Or else would they find out, oh, you're the guys who got arrested at Shannon. Mm -hmm. And most of those people understand what's going on with neutrality. It's significant for the entire world if a country like Ireland will stand up to the United States and say, look, we, do, we love you. We have a lot of people living in the United States. We have a lot of people of Irish descent living in the United States. You know, we appreciate a lot yeah. about America. We don't want to be part of your wars. We believe in neutrality. Our people want neutrality. And we feel neutrality is a very important step for world peace. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to tell you we're sorry, mm -hmm. but you can't keep using the airport. You can't keep flying your military planes over Irish airspace. And that's our vision. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the vision that we all have to have because that, if that happens, that will send ramifications and ripple effect throughout the entire world. Well, the U.S. is our friend. And you know what Ken said? Ken looked at him and he said, you know what? Friends don't let friends drive drunk. And the U.S. has been driving drunk for over 70 years. So if you're really friends with the U.S., proclaim your neutrality. <laughs>
Absolutely. Of course, there were two visits to the doll last week. Yeah. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, we were invited to be in the gallery in the doll while uh, <coughs> by Richard Boyd Barrett, uh, Boyd Barrett uh, used the question hour to, address, to raise the issue uh, with the Taoiseach. And Richard did a fabulous job. And I just want to say, Richard Barrett is following in the great example of Claire and Mick Wallace mm -hmm. in speaking up and speaking truth to power straight ahead. And we need more people to feel, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I can say this. I believe in this. Mm -hmm. You know, this is beyond politics. Let's stand up for what's right. And that's exactly what Richard did. No mm. holes barred. Yeah. You know, he laid it right out. You saw it. Yeah. It was wonderful. It was fine. Would... The state prosecutor uh, submitted to the judge who was hearing their case that they were a flight risk. Now, I can tell you, Ken and Tarek, wild horses wouldn't stop them from going to their trial because uh, they want to put the war on trial and the US military on trial and the role of Shannon Airport in the US military uh, endeavors uh, on trial. Uh, so they are more than willing to come back. We'll sign affidavits to that effect. Michael Finucane is representing them. But in a purely vindictive act, and I wonder an act pressured by the American uh, government, maybe, possibly. Uh, but certainly in a really shocking move, the state prosecutor presses the uh, judge to take their passports off them. That, that's encouraging to us. It's, it's not a game changer, but it's good to know that there is at least a core of TDs who are very interested in the issue. And uh, uh, we had the first round, round of postcards with us to hand out, and they all took postcards to, to send to the Minister of Justice. And, uh, so and I'm hoping that more TDs will follow in that example. Mm -hmm. And you become a better human being when you do that. You, you become stronger. You can walk with your head held up high when you speak truth to power. The postcards, and they say, let them go home for Christmas. Support our troops. <laughs> and, and on the other side, it's got a message to Minister Charles Flanagan, right? With the address. Oh, you have to. And the message says, please allow U.S. peace activists Ken Mayers, 82, and Tara Kalf, 77, return home to their families for Christmas. Uh -huh. They were arrested opposing U.S. wars and defending Irish neutrality at Shannon Airport, and so forth. And this, this woman, Aiden, has a very interesting story of how she just happened to run into us yesterday, totally serendipitously, and she's from the States. Well, basically, I'm doing my PhD in Galway. I had no real reason to be in Dublin yesterday, but I ran into the lads across the street, and I, I kind of followed you guys. I was a little bit creepy about it. I followed them because <laughs> I saw their their hats, and during anti some anti-Trump protests at my old school in Lowell, I had noticed the Veterans for Peace because we have a lot of vets at UMass Lowell. So I had to stop and chat to the lads, and now we're on a very long walk together. And it's the same age as my daughter. And I know one thing. I know that the U.S. military is destroying the environment and the planet. They're using more petroleum than any other single entity in the world. So it's not just the wars. We have a world that we want Aiden and other young people to be able to live in. I'm not going to be here that much longer, but I want them to have a world. I want them to have water to drink and clean air to breathe. And they won't unless we stop the U.S. military and all these wars. Well, if, just to encourage people, if you see us walking, feel free to stop us. We love it when people stop us. And we'll give you one of these and we'll give you a postcard if you like also. And, free, and feel free to join us on the walk. The freedom to, we would like to return home, <laughs> the, free, the freedom to affirm strongly affirm Irish neutrality, and the freedom to stop war. We're, we're walking our way up to the border. We're not allowed to leave the Republic. Uh, so that we're walking through, uh, let's see, uh, next stop will be, um, we'll be going to Russian Lusk, but uh, people who meet, meet us there, take us to Dona for the, for the night and for a meeting in Dona Beatty. Then we'll resume the walk from Russian Lusk up to um, Drogheda, uh, and uh, we're going to take a, a day off on Saturday. We're going to take a train back to 
uh, Dunleary, and then we'll start again from Drogheda on Monday um, and have a few stopping points along the way, hit Dundalk on Wednesday, uh, and then walk to the border on Thursday, uh, north of Kilcurry. around you tell me what do you see what's happening to you and me god gave us